Hi, this is the first video in the series titled Designing IoT Devices. The term Internet of Things means different things to a lot of different people depending upon your applications, depending upon your implementations, and depending upon your requirements. Now, in general, I'm not going to talk about uh, what kind of applications uh, IoT can be used and how to re, you know, really optimize your design and stuff like that. But I, what I will be talking about is the general implementation of IoT devices using various technologies uh, by different vendors such as Texas Instruments, uh, Scilabs, etc. And we'll also use Arduinos, Raspberry Pis and all ki kinds of uh, hardware available in the market. And what I'm going to try and do is I'm just going to take one simple design and I'm going to implement it using all possible technologies. We'll weigh out the pros and cons of uh, using a particular technology, what advantages a technology brings with it and what disadvantages that, uh, that particular technology has in uh, our Internet of Things applications. So let's get started. So when I say Internet of Things, that means a device or a digital uh, microprocessor or microcontroller is able to connect to the internet and then it's, about, it's uh, able to send data onto a service on the internet. So where does that data actually go? So we have a couple of options. The first one is if you are already comfortable with coding or you uh, already have a good idea of what uh, IoT protocols such as uh, MQTT and Co-op do. So what you can do is you can use a ready-made sandbox. In our case, I am listing out iot.eclipse.org at port 1883, which is basically a MQTT broker. So what that allows you to do is take an IoT device in your house, bounce a message from uh, this particular server and then it can be read off some other way place so what you do is you basically publish to this uh, to a topic on this particular server and then some if some other device has subscribed to that particular uh, subject then he gets those messages of course uh, there are no encryptions there's no quality of service uh, at this particular layer and uh, and you know it's free of cost and you can just experiment with it this is a sandbox there's no guarantee how long this thing will be online and there is no guarantee of anything so if you're really comfortable with the uh, MQTT you want to experiment with MQTT and stuff like that you can use iot.eclipse.org the second option is a dweet.io now uh, just like we use twitter and we tweet so dweet is for communication and to m machine to machine communications what it allows you to do is instead of using MQTT it uses HTTP requests to post uh, data from a device onto a particular system. Now, what you can do is you can have again uh, some other machine uh, which is taking data, in, and you can you can display the data, save the data. Again, there's no storage, there's no uh, anything of that kind going on on the server side, but you get it free of cost, and it's really easy to use if you have a bit of coding knowledge. And you can use in either of these cases, you can use a microcontroller or a PC running a particular script or a software to actually implement uh, your particular IoT application. Next, I'd like to discuss Tembu. Now, Tembu is a great service when you're starting out with Internet of Things. Now, Tembu is a service online. Of course, it's free of cost. It, uh, it doesn't have uh, anything regarding storage or anything, but it has a lot of APIs. So if you're trying to connect, uh, say, a particular software script, something written in Node.js or something that has uh, something in Python. If you want to connect it to a service online, well, you can do that very simply. You can go on to Tembu.com and you can download the particular API in your particular favorite language that you're doing your project in, and bam, you just use their API, just use their keys. It's all free of cost and it's uh, really intuitive. You just uh, give it the parameters you want. I did a project uh, recently, uh, the Internet of Holiday Things, uh, where I had my Twitter account uh, connected to a Raspberry Pi via Tembu, wherein it used to search for a keyword and then it did something uh, according to that. So it was really easy to do using Tembu. Of course, again, the drawback here is, like I said, there's no storage online of any kind. Uh, so you're responsible for uh, saving or storing that data if you want to, you know, later on query it, you know, you want to later on uh, mine your data or something like that. So that's completely up to you. The next service is PubNub. PubNub is a communications, uh, inter it's a worldwide communication system for machine to machine. It's not free of cost, but they do have services to encrypt your data. They have the capability for you to store that data on their web server. And then you can, later on, you can do a uh, play, uh, record and play kind of thing with your data, and you can later on analyze it. So the last uh, service I'd like to talk about is code, uh, the Google Cl uh, Cloud. Uh, there is a big uh, 
query uh, service available from Google Cloud, which allows you to do an RDBMS, uh, sorry, which allows you to do an RDBMS query. Uh, they claim on the website that they can do terabytes of data uh, to be searched in 10 seconds flat. So if you have an application where you need a lot of data accumulated in a place and then you need to relate some uh, points of uh, information in between from all the data points, uh, from all the sources, then you can use uh, BigQuery and then you can use Google Cloud for those kind of cases. In either case, we'll be using either MQTT or REST. Uh, and MQTT protocol works uh, on the port 1883. It requires a broker. There's no uh, data storage uh, by default by the brokers. And the second option is REST, of course. REST is an HTTP-based uh, service uh, where you can basically use HTTP post and get requests to put data on a server. Again, you have to design those servers on that. So uh, let's take a look at uh, the basic application that I've designed for all my experiments. So this is something that's going to be common for a lot of things. In your system, probably what you're going to have is you're going to have to have a wireless access point, a uh, modem and connectivity to the internet already at your home, your workshop, or your uh, industrial setup, or whatever. So what I need to do, of course, you'll also have a cell phone uh, which connects to the internet. So I have that kind of connectivity. So I'll be selecting one of these services depending upon uh, the case that I'm discussing at that particular point of time. And we're going to be talking about one of these two cases when I, when I when talk about implementation of an IoT device. One of these cases is a direct IoT device implementation uh, which directly connects via uh, 802.11, and uh, that's Wi-Fi, um, uh, to my um, access uh, wireless router. The other option is if I have a distributed set, a set of small nodes uh, which may be communicating over wire or maybe they have uh, sub gigahertz modules and these IoT devices will be again talking to the gateway which can aggregate the data, maybe encrypt the data, do all kinds of uh, stuff on it. Um, because these IoT devices are typically going to be battery uh, devices, they're going to be constrained devices. So this uh, second architecture may be useful when you're talking about gathering a lot of data. And we'll talk about uh, uh, this uh, in a couple of other videos. When we talk about just wireless access points, this wireless access point can also be replaced by a, uh, a cellular modem. So in that case, when you dial up a call and, and then you send one byte of, or from, of data from an IoT device, the byte of data doesn't have that much of cost related uh, cost associated with it, as opposed to the cost of entirely setting up the call um, you know, having handshakes, then um, transferring the data, all the overheads and all that, that can be really burdensome. So when you have a, a gateway or an aggregator, you can have a lot of data coming in and then you can decide when that uh, gateway transmits data over the internet, over a cellular internet. But we'll just, we'll do, we'll do the details of that in another video. And of course, in our application, we're going to have these three ends. So we're going to have a temperature sensor, which is going to be continuously sending temperature data from our environment, from our office, uh, and it will be sending our, that uh, data on from our workbench to the internet. The second is going to be an LED. Uh, that LED will glow depending upon a command that is received from that Internet of Things service, uh, one of these four services that I've selected. And the last one is a button press, which uh, this signifies an analog data transmission, and the button send uh, signifies a digital data transmission. So we'll take a look at how uh, how much data each one of these um, you know, sensors or one of these nodes can produce and we'll, we'll do a comparison of how uh, any one particular technology is beneficial in that particular case or maybe it's uh, detrimental to the whole design itself. Uh, what I expect at the end is perhaps some graphs. I'll be storing the data. I'll be doing some persistence somewhere. Uh, there will be alerts. For example, if I have a cell phone, I would like it when the temperature in my office goes beyond a certain uh, level. Yeah, and the last is, of course, control. I want to be able to press a button and switch on or switch off the LED. This can, again, be later on translated into switching off the lights in your office. Maybe, you know, the possibility is endless, and they completely and totally depend upon you. But the, uh, the objective of this series of videos is to um, explain how simple it is to, do in, uh, to de design an IoT device from any of the given technologies, but at the end of the day, it's a, it's a uh, designer's choice as to how you can optimize that design. You can, you can do the same design using a CC3200, a, say, an 8085 from Scilab, say, a Sleepy B, or you can do a Raspberry Pi, a BeagleBone Black, or even something uh, that's like embed compatible. But then uh, it's your decision. We'll look at the pros and cons about what 
benefits one particular uh, technology has over the other and uh, we'll probably have a lot of uh, implementations of IIT and I hope at the end of this series uh, everyone watching has a very good idea on uh, uh, what they would do want to do with their next IoT project so in the next video I'll be starting with the CC3200 uh, as a basic IoT device and we'll be going through the design of the hardware as well as from the code I'll be discussing that in the next video so I'll see you there